Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be going through how I turned my garage from this into this. Now before I got started, I did a lot of looking around online at other people's finished garages, probably like you're doing right now. I found some different ideas that I wanted to incorporate into my own garage, which is about 400 square feet. I decided to do a color scheme in gray, black, and white since I thought that would look really good and sharp and that those colors are generally pretty easy to find. I wanted to give my garage a finished look, obviously, so I knew I would have to paint the walls. And for the flooring, my dad had done epoxy on his garage floor previously, uh, so I wanted to do something similar. Another thing I saw that I liked online was a slat wall, which is basically the storage system that goes right up against your wall. And another idea that I wanted to incorporate um, was, you know, the high shelving in my garage because I have very high ceilings. So with all those ideas in mind, I got together and created a plan. The first step I wanted to do was to get some good lighting. Um, my garage isn't very well lit. I just have two light bulbs um, at the top uh, you can see right there. And my dad actually had replaced his with these newer light bulbs that are LEDs and it's, you know, kind of has the three different panels in it um, that are supposed to make the garage much brighter. So I wanted to try that out and make sure that my garage was well illuminated. All right, here's the big test. Wow, it is so much brighter. Started. Uh, taking everything out of the garage. That's gonna be the hardest thing to take out right there. Harley! <laughs> Alright, so all done for the day. Got a lot out. That's my last thing I gotta do. Alright, I started painting. Got my long uh, stick with the roller on it. Got my paint right there. Just uh, gonna keep applying it at the top until it's all done. All right, so I'm making some progress here. It's looking pretty good. I'm not trying to leave any streaks or anything. Okay, so instead of me having to go to the paint bucket um, every single time I need paint, I poured some in this cup and I made this little makeshift, you know, holder out of this uh, tray. And unfortunately, I went to go move the ladder and I moved this side of the ladder and this side didn't move a little bit and it fell. So now I got paint everywhere. But the good part is that I haven't epoxied the floor yet and that's not on the epoxy. You know, this floor is going to get redone anyway. All right, I'm finally done with the ceiling. It looks pretty good. All right, so I'm about to start um, putting the primer on the walls. Um, but before I do that, I just want to run this uh, brush over them Make sure that there's not any um, dirt or dust. You could see all of that coming off. Look at that. Yeah, so it was definitely a good move using the brush on there. Look at all of the dirt that came off. Let's look at what I'm going to be using here. I'm going to be using this uh, half inch nylon polyester uh, roller. Uh, the guy at the uh, Sherman Williams re recommended half inch just because. So you're going to be going over like a rougher surface, so he said a thicker was better. So I'm using half inch, and then I'm using this Luxon paint, concrete, and masonry, masonry primer sealer from Sherman Williams. All right, so I've been going at it for a good half hour or 20 minutes now. Yeah, you can tell that. You know, the roller just doesn't get in those seams, so I'm going to have to come back with the paintbrush and get in those. Um, which isn't terrible, but um, maybe I should have gotten them with an even, even thicker, um, maybe three-fourths it would be better. Um, so maybe I'll switch to that and see if that makes a difference so it gets in the seams more. All right, so I just finished up the first day. I got two-thirds done. I'm happy with... Uh, how it came out so far, I thought I would finish everything today. I mean, I worked from 9.30 to 6.30. I took like an hour lunch break and that's it. All right, so 
me and Harley finally got everything all primed. Um, the prime is down every little inch pretty much. And we're ready to start painting. Um, instead of using the rollers, because that was very difficult, I decided to buy this sprayer instead. Should make it a lot easier. Um, instead of taking, probably it took me like eight hours to do, maybe more. I should be able to do this in a couple hours now. When painting with the sprayer, I did horizontal even strokes and made sure to slightly overlap each line. I also made sure to keep my arm perpendicular to the wall and tried to keep the same distance so it would go on evenly. Using the sprayer turned out to be a great decision. It took a while to learn how to use it and to clean it, but overall it saved me a lot of time and effort and I definitely recommend it for anybody doing a bigger project. Alrighty, so I've got it all screwed in, um, with a bunch of screws on the bottom and then just two at the top. Now I can start sliding in the slats. So just real quick on how I would put it on the slat wall is um, I would put it in each side and then it's kind of like a tongue and groove. So I would just pound it with my fist and make sure that it was in the groove. And then next I would just make sure that it was level. And then I would go ahead and make my holes, drill my holes. And then I would vacuum all of the dust up just so none of that dust stays in there um, for when I put the different types of hangers on. And then I would just screw it in and then just keep repeating um, up and up until it's done. Next, I wanted to install the high shelves against the outer wall with about 17 inches of room from the ceiling. So it'd have just enough room for storage totes. The ones I ordered on Amazon were two feet deep by three feet wide and were very sturdy. The installation was pretty simple. Mark the holes using the template, then drill the holes, then put in the anchors, screw in the mounts, and lastly, just lay the shelf down on top. I actually had to lower the spring down so the shelves would fit, but after I did that, it was easy going. All right, good day. So fix the spring, put up two more shelves. Harley's happy tearing up some plastic. Harley! All right, so I just started framing out where the pegboard's gonna go. Um, we're gonna cover up those ugly pipes, put the pegboard right over it. Um, we needed to put the wood there anyway. Um, that's just how you drill in the pegboard. But uh, yeah, it should have covered it up nicely. Um, so when you're doing projects by yourself, sometimes you have to come up with innovative ways to you know, get things to hold in place um, so that you can drill it in here. All right, so I've got my pegboard ready. Well, not ready. I need to cut this. It's all painted. And then I have all of the uh, framing. All right, so I have actually cut out the little piece up there on the wrong side by accident um, instead of doing it on the black side. So I'm just gonna have to paint this again. I, I think it's all right. I think I'd rather have the brown side um, painted anyway because, you know, say um, it gets scratched up a little bit and the, and the black paint comes off instead of it showing the white background which will look really crappy or at least it'll be brown and it, it'll show you know a little bit less and it won't look as bad so you know I'm just going to paint it with the roller um, once I get it all secured but this is my setup right here so I had to have it resting I just screwed in the top right now I'm going to um, start screwing in the left if I can somehow get up there alright got it up Looks really, I made sure it was level. Um, still have to paint it, but yeah, it's gonna look really good once I paint it. All right, so just a little update with the progress. Uh, I painted the two bottom panels yesterday and now I just screwed them in. Looking good, very happy with how that came out. Um, I <clears throat> cut this in half using the table saw yesterday. Um, I have the other one there, and I just need to make a couple more cuts in it, because uh, you can see there, uh, it's about 8 inches by 3 inches, so I drew that right here, and I'm about to cut that out, then I can uh, just screw it up there. Alright, so so far with that big piece of plywood that I had, I put up those two shells, um, and then I filled in those 
two flood vents, and then I still had some extra, so I put it up here. All right, so I just finished putting the trim on the door. I had a little bit of an issue with the trim. I had leaned it up against the garage, um, and my fiance came in and it totally fell down and cracked. Um, but that's okay. It's just trim. I don't really care that much. I'm going to paint over it. Um, so you won't be able to see that crack that well. And yeah, came out pretty good. So now I'm probably about three quarters done. So I'll just take a step back and show you what the garage is looking like. As you can see, I started utilizing the slat wall and pegboard a bit. And I put another section of slat wall up on the left wall, covering up that wire, which I didn't bother videoing. So now that I got the door all painted and set up, put up a little artwork that I had from my previous apartment. It's a seven line train, take the city field, and also put in a TV. Ran the wire behind the pegboard. It's a 40 inch TV from, I got it from Costco. It was around 200 bucks and it has a Chromecast built in. So I can literally get live TV on my phone and then just cast it to the TV, which is great. Now that I had my TV installed, I could spend all my Sunday building my workbench without missing any of the NFL playoff games. It took me about eight hours altogether, and I only spent about $100 on the parts. I might make a separate video on my experience sometime in the future, but to sum it up real quick, I cut the top into a 27 by 95 inch rectangle with my table saw with the help of my sister Shannon. Then I cut two by fours to frame it into. Next, I cut the legs using two by fours to support it and screwed them in. To support the legs, I made the cross beams out of two by fours as well and screwed them in. This also would be used for another shelf for more storage. Lastly, I finished it off with a coat of black paint to match the color scheme of the garage. The next step was to epoxy the floors. I had heard some horror stories about bad epoxy jobs done where it would start to chip and come apart after a year or so, so I wanted to get it done professionally. I did my research and found a local expert with a proven track record for a very reasonable price. After they did the initial grind, we ran into some delays because it was January in New Jersey and very cold. Uh, and the floors, they need to be around like 60 degrees in order for the epoxy to cure. So we ended up having to wait a while until it warmed up to put the epoxy down, which was done in several layers. It was definitely worth the wait, and I think the metallic epoxy look came out great. Now that the floor was complete, it was time to move everything back in. I bought a few large items, such as this mobile tool chest, as well as a tall garage cabinet for more storage. Now that things are moved back in, let's take a look at the finished garage. I've got these shelves up there. I've got a ton more storage. I really have more storage than I know what to do with. Um, because up there, I mean, a lot of these totes I don't even have full yet. Came out great. Got this nice big workbench. Ton of room for storing all my tools. Got the bikes back in. Looking good. Harley, how do you like it? You like it a lot? Yeah? <laughs> Got the TV up there. I added a old sign that I had. Looking good. If you guys made it this far, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give me a like and subscribe for more content in the future. I'll see you later. I wanna go do some karate in the garage.